Sarah, we're doing this. We're alive. We're in the same place on video together. We have been working, volunteering together on video, through video, having video calls. I don't know what I'm saying. Whatever. For the past year. And now we're finally in person together, and it's so great. We haven't even been together for 24 hours now. Nope. And it has been. We only been... recorded another podcast. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I should mention that. So this is the Travel Games Podcast show. As you can see by your you watching this right now, but this is episode two. So if you haven't listened to How to Be Global by Beautiful Sarah, then you need to go listen to that first because that is episode one. This is episode two of our joint ser- series. Yep. Is that what we would call this? Totally. So Sarah's a pro at podcasting. She's oh, about to hit, or she just hit her 101 episode. So I, as you can see, this is number two. Maybe one. Who knows? And it's a podcast show, so it's video and will be on podcast platforms. But this is Travel Gives podcast show, how to cultivate community when you travel. And none other than the Sarah is going to be the best person to talk about this topic because she travels for work. She's also lived in three different countries. Yep. Three different countries. And she just has an amazing insight on other cultures. And she's just the most outgoing, nice, easiest person to talk to. Hence why we connected. Because I'm kind of an introvert sometimes. But she just makes me feel so comfortable. So, Sarah, can you please introduce yourself? I mean, this was the best intro of all (laughs) time. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here um, as a second guest. And behind the scenes, Mandy and I, we've been talking about her podcast show for a very long time. And Sarah I'm, has been a huge help. And I'm thrilled that we are live and I can talk to all of you and talk to Mandy. So if we don't know, if we look in the camera or at each other, just please go with the flow. Right? Yeah. Or like, you're like, where are we? <laughs> um, so I'm Sarah. I currently live in Austria. I was born in Germany. I have been living in Malta as well, but I always joke that I only have a German passport left from you know, when I was born. And actually the other day I was talking to my colleagues at work and they were saying, hey, you were a real third culture kid, even though you are not. So Mm. I just made it myself because I love to explore cultures. I seriously consider myself as a global citizen. And, you know, some people just say it to sound fancy or cool, but this is really what my DNA is. You are a global citizen. I love to connect with other people in the cultures and also experience. I'm joking that I'm part-time American by now and like part-time whatever. I um, have my own podcast, which is called How to Be Global, what Mandy just mentioned. And I also work for an organization called JA Worldwide. And what we do is we go, well, we are in 115 countries around the world. So so that's a lot. (laughs) And we offer entrepreneurship programs. So we go into schools and the kids, they actually create their own startup within school. So like real products, real services. And they learn this whole thing. And my job is to cultivate alumni networks after that. And make sure that people stay connected. So yeah, long Gosh. introduction. <laughs> a lot of countries, but I love communities. Oh, it's so amazing. I love what you do at JA Worldwide. And of course, the How to Be Global podcast. But at JA Worldwide, I think it is so cool. I I want to go back and like do mm-hmm. this high school kids student program. It's yeah. just so smart to teach young kids how to be an entrepreneur. Because yeah. it is just so common nowadays even if you don't continue on that path of entrepreneurship I think it teaches you such good qualities Mm, for work life if you will oh my gosh that's amazing so with all of your different countries you've lived because you've made Malta your like home base Mm -hmm. for a period of time you're you're, now your home base is in Austria well basically we should probably just say it's in America since you've been here for (laughs) two months now and I want to be (laughs) selfish and keep you here but how do you cultivate community when you're entering a new country you know making a new home base or just traveling around yeah I think first and foremost I would love to break down the word community Mm. because it sounds like such a scary big thing or like a lot of people and the community. And it sounds like you have to be integrated like a thousand percent. Otherwise you're not part of the community. Right. So how I live my life is probably very different to a lot of people because probably every single piece of my life is remote. Mm -hmm. My friendships are remote. My best friend lives in Germany. I've seen him four times in my life. Seriously. We talk every day. Yeah, we met, It's that's another story. You know, if you want to know that story, please call us afterwards. Anyway, so then I have like seriously friends all across. 
usually the people who are closest to me are never where I am. So yeah, I, I have like community. I have a lot of online community and mm-hmm. trying to put offline aspects like this right now into it. But I feel like a lot of people always try to be inside of the community. But that also means that you're settled and fixed in something, mm-hmm. right? So it's great if you're part of your local community, highly encouraged to volunteer or do something wherever you are. Yes. But then also keep this flexible mindset of like, you can have a community no matter where. You don't have to be present on the spot for being in a community, right? So that's like the first take I would love to say. So to break yes. this a bit down, that it's like less pressure on like, I need to fit perfectly into wherever the community Absolutely. is. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be like a huge community. Totally. Like, yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. such a good point of view. So I think that's the first. And then how to do, how to create community. Um, um, I figured out during COVID that I'm a part-time extrovert actually. <laughs> so I love talking to people. I love, I'm very outgoing. So I don't mind going in a room full of strangers. I actually love going into a room full of strangers to be that's honest. Like one of my like, worst really? nightmares oh, no, it's and I love that do. you're that way because I want some of that to rub off yeah. on me <laughs> I think to be honest I was very so this is please hold for a minute you know I think we have time um <laughs> when it was in school mm-hmm. so this changed all when it was in school I was so shy really I didn't say a word I oh was like gosh, tiny small Sarah scared of raising their hand talking about anything that was me don't ask me what happened but all of a sudden I think after actually taking the entrepreneurship program myself where you were forced to talk to people because you needed to create a product I bet and like do it that's it yeah Uh, something changed and then all of a sudden I did all these extrovert things and since I put myself out there all the time even if I travel for work it's Mm -hmm. mainly on my own and I meet people wherever I go and but I don't necessarily know them properly right so I'm 90% 90% of my life in a situation where I don't know people, but I have to connect with them because otherwise, what, shall, what else shall I do? Yeah. Do you feel you were like forced into learning that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it just turned around and now I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll make friends wherever I go. Yeah. Right. Like I always find people. I talk to the Uber driver. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's not very German. Um, <laughs> so I think when you go somewhere, you have to put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hate to say it and I hope wish I could tell you oh you know this secret <laughs> yeah this one thing will it's help not, no, but no just, yeah. you just need to speak up that's it you yeah. go in and then it's uncomfortable at first probably yeah but then you need to get out there easy I mean hard is if you go into a cafe and try to talk to strangers right that mm-hmm. is probably I'm not doing this as well it's very awkward yeah but what you can do is um on my podcast episode actually Mandy said this thing and I would agree on yeah. like finding Facebook groups finding mm-hmm. Something online before you're on the site. Yeah. Or like find a, go to an Airbnb experiences and book a yes, yoga class. Those are great. Or whatever. Like yeah. just try to find Cooking something nuts. or like go and meet up. That's an app. I'm not sure if you know this one, but mm-hmm. a lot of areas have like local events or whatnot. So just go to a place where people already want to connect. Right. Yeah. Because then the atmosphere is so much easier because they will just kind yeah. of grab you. And now it's so funny because no matter where I go, now I'm always the person talking to the one who is introvert, who is yeah. like, you can see the terrified face. Right. And, well, and you're so welcoming and I'm warm. always the person going to this room like, hey, yeah. welcome. You're okay. <laughs> Just like grabbing the people. And because I was so grateful to have these people in the beginning. Yeah. And now I'm like, okay, well, I grab this person. I know she, he or she looks terrified. So I'll just grab the yes. person. But the trick is, I mean, why are you scared? Right? Like, yeah. What should the people say? Like, oh, you're a weird person. I mean, nobody don't says, talk to me. like, yeah. don't talk to me. Or you're, well, in Germany, maybe. You know? <laughs> like, no, just joking. Um, but it is not easy in the beginning, yeah. but it gets much easier. Now I'm like, okay, whatever. Just throw me in a room. I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. I'll find a person absolutely. or two people to talk to. Yeah. And if you want some more of those tips on how to find those groups and the best way to find it, then you have to go listen to part one how, on how to be global episode 101. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a really great point. I love that so much. And I think that, so we talked a little bit about on how to be global. We talked a little bit about like how I got started in my sabbatical. So Mm -hmm. if you want to hear more of that, of course, go listen over there. Don't want to repeat it, but I'd love to know, like some of my Mm -hmm. favorite travel experiences came from my Mm -hmm. sabbatical. I took a couple years ago that was about four months long, but what is your favorite travel experience that taught you the biggest lesson? Mm -hmm. Great question. There's so many. I love this one. But I think 
the the travel experience says let's you know yeah make plural so many. <laughs> um to countries where you don't know anything about the culture mm-hmm. where you don't know where you, what you get yourself into i mean I was born in Germany, so we have been to Italy when I was a kid all the time on holidays. So I love okay. Italy yeah, with a passion. It's amazing. But you're still going back into like a kind of familiar space. Right. So you have great experience. Everything is amazing. But you don't get this like what I think you're looking for, this like actually cha- life-changing lesson or yeah. biggest thing. So I think one of them was totally when I went to Ghana. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was with Bork. So I went to Ghana. I've never been to Africa before. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what I get myself into, right? So yeah. we had a big conference. So that was obviously like much more westernized. Let's just call it that way because it was a fancy hotel and whatnot, right? Yeah. And you get a glimpse of the culture because there were people from, I think, 12 African countries, whatnot. Oh, that's amazing. But afterwards, I'm like, hey, I want to know what Ghana is like. Yeah. I mean, you can't fully experience that in like three days. But I'm right. like, clearly, the hotel fanciness. That's not what a country looks like, right, any yeah. country. Yeah. So then I went to like explore Accra, which is the capital of Ghana. Okay. And I went to a park called Jamestown because everyone's like, oh, that's a tourist attraction. You should totally go there. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I went there and I was like, this was like the craziest moment of my life. Probably I went there and it's like the poorest area in Accra. And I'm like, first and foremost, why? Why would you call this a tourist torture, attraction? Yeah. And then we walked there and then there was a guy, a guy who was a guide, right? And he's like, do you want me to show you around? I was there with a colleague. I'm like, sure. So he told us the story of what Jamestown's is, Jamestown is like. So there's so many orphans in this area. Oh my God, my heart. Because it's right at the seafront, right? Mm-hmm. So the parents are fishermen and it's like so poor. They don't have shoes. They don't have how, like nothing. Wow. And then the parents, they're fishermen, they go out in the sea, and the sea is up, and they don't come back. So that's where oh, there's, like, a bunch of kids. Gosh. They're orphans. Yeah. And I just stood there, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, why is nobody helping these kids, right? Yeah. So this was, like, the first time I experienced real poverty. Yeah. I mean, there is poverty probably in every single country in this world. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But comparing European and especially German poverty with this is... You know, you can't. Yeah, it's uncomparable, yeah. So I, I experienced that and I was there and I was just like, I felt so helpless and I didn't want to be this like, I'm going to save you all because how? I could, I don't know. Yeah. But then I started on the spot, actually a fundraiser. I took my phone and I'm like, hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> like, I'm here. I don't know. I, I don't know how we can help, but here's a fundraiser. Let's all gather money. I'll make sure that these kids, like these orphans here, gets like a better life in the future don't ask me how I'm going to do this let's do it so that's what happened because I didn't want to be just this tourist being on site and then going back home and be like okay whatever yeah I'll get my coffee from Starbucks yeah so then a year later we had like almost four thousand euros and then I'm like okay I'll I went back a year later and I'm like okay so what is the most sustainable way to help these kids yes they need food yes they need clothes yes they need a house but that's not going to teach them how to survive in the future. Right. So I'm like, okay, education, right? They need to get into school. So thank right. God I partnered with a comp- uh, with an organization called um, Educom.world. They're amazing. Check them out. And we partnered with a school called Across Street Academy. And what they do is they bring orphans from the street into the school. Mm-hmm. And no matter how old they are, what skills they have, they teach them how to write, how to read. Because if you're an orphan, I mean, these are orphans, right? Even yeah. if they're 10 years old. You can't just place them in a school because they right. don't know, they can't keep up with the kids who have been in school since first grade. Right. So long story short, thank God we brought in thirty kids with oh that money gosh, for yeah. an entire year into that school. And this is a shout out to everyone who was involved because I know that the every single penny of this money went into the school and I know the kids. I've been there, seen the kids, I know they're okay. They get food, and so I'm going to start a fundraiser soon again to support them in another year. And this was probably like the biggest. That was a story, but oh, I love it. The biggest impact, and probably also what Mandy stands for, is like give back. Yeah, I mean, you can. Do you don't something. need a master plan. No, yeah. I had no idea. I was just devastated. you just started. You started right there. I'm like, you took action basically. And yeah. also, what I stand for, and I think this very connects well, is like 
I want to make sure that every single person has a voice at the table. I know that's mm-hmm. a giant goal and probably I can't solve this myself for sure not. But, you're starting but if I speak beautiful. up and if I give people a voice and then everyone else, I, you know, I empower and help inspire that they speak up and they empower others. Yeah. There we go. That's Absolutely, a ripple effect yeah. and everyone speaks up. So. Oh sorry. my gosh. Awesome. Thank sorry. you for sharing that story. <laughs> that, that is amazing. And that is exactly what, you know, travel gives is here to help people learn and to teach people, to educate people on is that, you know, travel somewhere different, get outside of your bubble, get outside of your comfort zone. Mm. That's how you learn the most about yourself, but that's also how you become a global citizen. And that's how you're going to really understand other cultures. And I think Sarah is a perfect <laughs> example of what travel gifts stand for. Cause it's all about just doing something, no matter what it is that you can do. Um, I know like some people have traveled to other places and have seen orphanages or schools that need supplies and they'll go to a local shop, purchase the supplies and give them right there, which is great because you're supporting local by buying them locally on Mm -hmm. the ground, not bringing them with you. Yeah. But like what you did, that's incredible. You just took action right there and then like, I don't know exactly how this is going to unfold, but I know that I'm going to tell people right now. Mm-hmm. share in this with me, join me in raising money. And I promise you that every penny, every cent will get back to these children here. Yeah. And you did it. Yeah. That's incredible. That, that is amazing. Okay. We're done. That was the best story yeah. ever. You're I'm like, never going to okay. do Travel Goes Podcast least. show again. Like that was, that was amazing. <laughs> Just <kidding. laughs> Oh my gosh. I love that. Really. Thank you for sharing that story. And of course, when Sarah starts that again, that will be advertised, supported, promoted all over Travel Gives. I would love to partner with you oh, on that. Yes, let's do that. And any way that I can help out. Um, oh my gosh, I don't even I don't even know what to say next. That was so amazing. Oh. I love it. So it from that story, that transitions great into my next question. One way that you think everybody can be a better traveler. What yeah. do you think that looks like? I think one is throw your plastic into the bin. Number one, seriously. The easiest step ever. Like, put your trash into the trash can. Yeah. Right? That's it. If there's no trash can, carry it with you yeah, until you whatever. find a trash can. If you can. find trash on the street, just pick that trash up. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the easiest thing, probably, right? Mm-hmm. And I think what is more meaningful than, I mean, that's very meaningful, but like actually a bit more deeper as yeah. an answer is when I travel and when I work across cultures, so I feel like this has a lot to do with the culture wherever you go or, mm-hmm. you know, you talk to you need to make sure that you kind of reset your brain mm-hmm. on like neutral space. Yeah. When you go to another country, when you, let's say you travel to South America. Yeah. And you're from Europe. That is obviously a totally different culture. So instead of going there with like whatever expectation you have in your head, just reset into like a neutral space and just experience what is on the ground. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I always say this in How to Be Global, there's no right or wrong, even though our brains think like that. It's like, oh, they're doing this wrong. Like, yeah. I do it. This, there's no right. They do it different. This, you might not agree. Like, I don't agree with everything. You don't agree with everything. Yeah. You don't have to. But I feel like if we all can reset to a much more neutral mm-hmm. space mm-hmm. to like, okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah. I'll just go with the flow and see where this goes. Yeah. Then you don't, you know, need to be angry. You don't need to like be like, oh my God, this is, you know, we don't need all of these emotions. Yeah. Just because people do it differently. You might not be used to it, but I think this would be my number one advice to be much more understanding. And mm. Mandy said it, patient. It's, you know, sometimes it might drive you crazy. Also working cross culture or like when you travel on like the Uber is not coming or yeah. I don't, whatever it is, which you value just don't this energy is not worth it right like to like be angry and whatever just inhale what the culture is like and then still at the end you can decide if this is something for you or not yeah and if it's not well then just you don't need to visit that country again you can just go somewhere else so I think that's like probably the most important thing yeah so like having respect for wherever you visit have respect for what that culture looks like and not try to be I guess going in with like judgmental eyes, totally. like make sure you're going yeah. in with an open mind. And I think that's the best way to like really understand a culture and continue to become a global yeah. citizen is by having a new sense of awareness everywhere you go. Like knowing that it's going to be different from anywhere you've ever been 
have like that sense, and we talk about this a lot on Travel Gives, but have that sense of awareness because when you have that sense of awareness, which tends to be heightened when you travel, yeah. when you have that sense of awareness paired with open-mindedness, mm-hmm. then you're going to be able to, to one, enjoy yourself totally. and your surroundings so much more, but you're going to be able to learn so much more and take so much more in. So yeah. I, I love that. That's a yeah. really good way to put it. And also one more thing is what I personally hate with a passion is if people ask you where are you from I mean that's a whole other conversation but yeah. like if you have this like you now know where the person grew up or is from or have you in a college and yeah. then you jump in right away oh I know you do this this and this oh assuming right what their it's like traits are yeah you probably a lot of you do it I did it as well like in yeah. the beginning I did it all the time because it was so exciting I'm like oh yeah Americans oh they do this yeah which probably true <laughs> it's probably true but maybe also not yeah right? and no, then as an sure. individual you're like why would you I don't right and then if yeah. it, I had this example actually the other day where it was like oh but you're German and you don't know anything about beer you know I was just like not everybody in Germany drinks beer <laughs> I'm like uh, no I'm sorry I don't yeah. you know then it's like the most awkward moment for me to like yeah. explain why I don't know anything about beer and I'm like yeah because they don't drink a lot of beer that's why yeah. so instead of like some people have a lot of excitement and it's, they don't do it as like a bad thing. No, they want to find a way to connect. Correct. So they just kind of make yeah. assumptions is a strong word. Yeah. So yeah. what my tip would be here is like replace this with curiosity. Yeah. So instead of saying, Hey, you know everything about beer because you're German. Let's take yeah. this example. You would be make like, make it a question instead. You would keep be like, Hey, aren't Germans drinking a lot of beer? Yeah. I'm wondering if you know anything what's on the menu. Yeah. Or even and just I like, are like, you a beer drinker? Give me like a cool recommendations because I've heard that yeah. Germans drink a lot of beer. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, actually, you know what? I don't drink a lot of beer. So you I can't help you, but <laughs> it's true. A lot of, you know, then the whole conversation changes. And I yeah. think if you're not traveling and if you're not interacting online with a lot of other people from other cultures, you don't have this awareness in your head. So yeah. you be like, if I jump on something which I've heard in the news or somewhere else, oh, yeah. it might hurt the other person. Right. Right. So I think that's yeah. an important piece. I love that. Yeah, that's a really good point. I had that experience kind of similar. I was in Bali and I was at a cafe with somebody who was from Indonesia and then somebody else who was from Australia who visits Bali often. And this was on my second trip to Bali. And the three of us are sitting there outside of a cafe and to me like that's my dream and we've talked Mm -hmm. about this before like sitting at a table with like where everybody's from a different country a different background a different culture like I feel like that's Mm -hmm. something we both like love and like thrive in and so I was just so excited to like be with my friend who I had met you know a year and a half earlier the first time I went and then meet one of her friends from another country and I was just like oh this is amazing this is exactly what I wanted coming Mm -hmm. back here to visit Bali along with you know making connections was is just so important to me when I travel I want to make connections And so I was really enjoying our conversations. And of course, to like what you said, like I just ask a lot of questions Mm -hmm. instead of like making assumptions, like you said, like it's not good to make assumptions, ask them in a question format, because then it shows that like you're curious, but you're, you're genuinely like want to know like about that person. Correct. Yeah. And I think that's something that kind of just comes with time is knowing how to like ask questions. Um, But I remember we were just like chatting and like having a great time. And then all of a sudden, we're like, like I said, sitting outside this cafe, all of a sudden, a group of like four or five people walk by and they were so loud. Mm -hmm. And this is in Ubud, Bali. You know, it's pretty quiet. The streets are smaller. Mm -hmm. Like these people walked by and they were very loud. It like distracted us enough that we all stopped talking and like looked like is something Mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah. But they were just very loud. And granted, they were just having a good time and just socializing Maybe they had some drinks as you probably (laughs) just heard. We don't drink that much, but we all like turned and looked. And then the person, the woman from Australia was like, oh my gosh, they must be Americans. They're so loud. And I like, instead of getting to like, I of course wasn't going to get defensive, but for a second I was like, oh yeah, they must be Americans (laughs) because I was like, yeah, a lot of Americans are loud. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, wait a second, I'm not allowed person yeah I'm actually kind of quiet especially paired with my family which I guess that's not a greatest example <laughs> but I was like oh wow she's like making an assumption that mm-hmm. all Americans are loud and then I, I started to find myself like making not excuses but kind of making 
like kind of explaining like, oh yeah, like I know a lot of Americans who are loud. I was like, Mm -hmm. but I don't think I'm loud. Like, and then I started questioning me and who I am and my values. And I'm like, what, why am I questioning that? One, like, doesn't matter. Like, even if she thought that about me, it doesn't matter what she thinks about me. Like her, her opinion is none of my business, but I just thought that was interesting. I immediately got kind of like ready to stand up for myself, not American in gen- Americans in yeah. general, because it is true. You will meet Americans that are loud, yeah. but I was just re- so ready to mm-hmm. like be like, oh, well, I'm not that way. Because yeah. I, and I think that's just my traveler's global mm-hmm. mindset yeah, idea totally. that like I want to be more global and understanding of cultures. And I always want to go into a culture and like be myself, but still go in with respect and making sure that yeah. I know the customs wherever I travel, mm-hmm. yeah. what the atmosphere is like. And so that was, yeah, that was just really interesting. She just immediately was like, oh yeah, all Americans are loud. Yeah. And I think nobody wants to be like in this Bubble. position yeah. where you like trying to excuse yourself. I find myself all the time in it. I never want to say that I am German yeah, because I don't want to be put in that box. Right. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm Sarah. Like yeah. that's <laughs> I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> that is it. Right. Like, yeah. because I feel like I've been to so many different areas, so many different cultures. I don't identify as a German person. Right. And my grandma freaks out because she's like, yeah, but you're German. And I'm like, yeah, I have a German. I was born here. Yeah. There is a part of me, which is German, but there is a probably a much bigger part, which is the global. Now the Americans have like a big part of my life as well. <laughs> But then it, I feel like so offended if someone like, yeah, but you are German. And I'm like, who are you to define who I am? And like, I was why? born there, but that doesn't mean, I think, I think we want to put people in boxes. We yeah. want to classify people as like, you're German, you're American. And then you have these things. These and are then your you're, values. Yeah. Like, okay, like, you're huh? in this box. Now I can understand you. Yeah. Instead of like genuinely trying to like learn about yeah, somebody. Yeah, but the person. Yeah. Like, who, like, why would I define myself as like, I was born in this country. Like, mm-hmm. I don't get this concept of, like, why would that define me where I yeah. am, right? So, sorry, this got a bit of, you know, but no, I'm I so it. passionate about I love this. It. <laughs> and so many people don't realize, honestly, like, it comes down to you, you never know what a person has been through. You never know yeah. what a person stands for. And this is not only for culture. Oh, yeah. It is for literally everything. everything. So I think what we could all do is just be much more mindful of the person mm-hmm. you are in front of, no yeah. matter what it is, right? If the if it's LGBTQ, if it's I only God yeah. knows what, right? Like anything, just be more respectful and let the person speak, right? Like yeah, again, give the person the voice because yes, everyone has yes, their own yes. story. Like let them talk, and then you can ask questions, but don't assume anything and then be like oh yeah I know I know it yeah. because then it's obviously easier for your brain because you know box close next person mm-hmm. so that yeah. would be my general advice that just people talk and tell their own story I love that yeah ask questions instead of making assumptions absolutely wow I feel like we could just I mean yeah. we could talk yeah. for hours yeah I love it I love it so much so I do want to ask you so we were talking about earlier about how there are like certain traits that are so common in certain countries, Mm kind of like what we just said, but how we, and I I don't want to speak for both of us, but we were kind of talking about how like our parents and older generations tend to fall more into those Mm -hmm. traits, if you will, and aren't always as understanding to maybe the generation that wants to travel, or I shouldn't say generation, but the people that want to travel more, that want to be more Mm -hmm. global citizens what do you, how do you like handle that? Whether it's with your parents or just colleagues or friends or anything, like, do you have anybody in your life that like doesn't understand oh, yeah. <laughs> like, how, like why you want to travel so yeah. much, why you're so passionate mm-hmm. about it? Yeah. So uh, there are a million people who are <laughs> right. like, what, what are you doing? Yeah. Right? And like, when are you settling? Yeah. Isn't and it like, scary? I'm like, yeah. uh, settling mm-hmm. is not a thing in my life. I'm like, I, I don't why know. Why aren't I settled now? Like, do I have to? Like, <laughs> I don't think I, you know. Yeah. So, but um, it's a tricky one. And my best advice is don't co- va- waste. That's a pretty rough word. But, like, don't waste your energy on people who don't even want to understand it. Yeah. Right? Like That is so true. Don't justify your beliefs yeah, and values it's like, to somebody else. I you like do that. you. Great. I do me. Like, you yeah. don't need to understand my life. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I live my life and I'm very happy with this because that's what I chose to do. Yeah. And, like, if you don't agree, well, that's your problem. I'm not hurting anybody else. Yeah. So. <laughs> if it obviously comes down to like close family, I get it. It's a bit right. more tricky. However, I think what's most important is to make sure that your parents, or probably it's my many parents who have yeah. thoughts, um, 
to make them understand that like it makes you happy right it doesn't have to make like I would die if I have to live the life of my parents yeah I love them dearly and they're happy so I'm happy for them same 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 (laughs) and they would die if they have to live my life yeah absolutely so and at the end of the day you do whatever you can do and you have you know you have the ability to do whatever right and like why would you live a life for someone else just because then they think, oh, she fits in the box or like, I'm turning 30 next year. Well, there's no kids whatsoever planned anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Would my parents or grandparents would love that? Yeah, sure. But mm-hmm. like, then they would be happy and I would probably be not in a happy space because that's not what I want. So, yeah. Oh, we had a tricky. whole conversation about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's tricky, but I think when you find this like inner peace with yourself, yeah, this is so important that like, hey, this is my life. Like I... I want to do what I can do. And obviously you can't do everything you want, but like don't do something because someone else thinks that is the way you should be doing it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That is, that is so true. And I think it's so important to remember, like that is also something that you're going to find when you travel more, you're going to learn so much about yourself when you are getting outside of your comfort zone and traveling, Mm -hmm. whether it's solo trips or trips with friends, like you just learn so much on these travels. And I think that it's just important to really understand who you are and what you want. And like Sarah said, don't justify it to anybody else. You don't have to. Oh, beautiful answer. As always, we can go on and on, but we will wrap this up soon. Regrettably, because I would love to keep talking with you, (laughs) but I want to ask you some rapid fire questions. And these are just fun questions. So the first one is, what are three items you always pack with you? Oh, a great pillow oh. for the airplane. Mm-hmm. Snacks in the airplane. That's the most important thing. Never go anywhere without snacks. Amen. <laughs> and the third one is, well, it's a split between my laptop and my phone. Unfortunately, I will never leave my phone or laptop anywhere, which is not the best idea, but yeah. that's just where I am. <laughs> yeah. No, I like it. Those are great ones. Okay. And what is your favorite travel tip to give to people? What can you share with the Travel Gives audience? Yeah. Random trips are the best. Go on websites like Kiwi.com. If you have like free time, let's say five days, Mm -hmm. and you're like, I'm not sure where to go. Go on Kiwi.com, for example, and then you can, wherever you are, put your location location, and then put like anywhere. That's my favorite thing to do. And then just go to like whatever destination pops up, the cheapest or whatever budget you have. Yeah. And also go to the place in which are sound very random in your head. They are totally not because people live there and they have yeah. their own culture. But go for that trip, which doesn't sound like, oh, I'm going to LA or I'm going to Paris or something yeah. just more random. Random is really cool. Something off the beam. Yeah. I like that a lot. And that's a big travel tip I talk about too. Like don't, if you can, don't pick your destination first. Like if you're on a travel budget with most yeah. of us want to save money when we travel, yeah. like base it off of where can you get a cheaper ticket at the Correct. time. Yeah. Like sometimes that's a better way to do it if you need to save money. Yeah. So that's a great one. And I know this is hard for travelers to <laughs> nomads, remote workers to answer, but what is your next, so not your top, but your next dream destination? Oh. I would love to go to Japan because I haven't been a Can lot that be in Asia. Our first trip together. Oh my gosh, we would we'll have a blast. be in Japan and we'll next, record another next episode. episode. <laughs> um, I mean, in spring, it's probably not going to happen next spring, but soon. But like you know, the cherry trees oh my and gosh, like because yeah. I, I find the Japanese culture so fascinating from the outside so already, yeah. and I really want to learn. Here's the curiosity again, like actually talking to the like check out how they do life. That's yeah. what I would love to do because it's so different to oh what gosh. it is. Yeah. You'd be so really Japan. good at making friends there too. Yeah. We'll <laughs> see when that's going to happen. We'll let you know. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, well, thank you so much for being on the Travel Gives Podcast show. <laughs> yes. I still don't know if that's going to be the title. It is. I need your Here help with that. <laughs> I am so glad that you are on. And again, make sure you go to How to Be Global, Sarah's podcast, to listen to part one because this is part two of it. So we start the conversation over there and there are some things we kind of mention in this Mm -hmm. on that one. So go ahead and listen over there and we will talk to you next time on the next episode. Who knows when that's going to be. Bye everyone.